Okay, let's go. All right, in case you're keeping track, it's Monday, January 25th. But it could be Monday, March 25th from last year. Yep. And we don't. We really don't even know anymore. This could all be a dream. It could. It could. A terrible now, dream. Um, it's minus four right now, going up to one today. Living rent-free in 2021, like I said a second ago, just about an hour away. Eight o'clock, we're going to have another keyword for you to text message to us. Google Smart Home Mini, you win instantly, as in today. But after that, I mean, you're in the draw, which is pretty sweet. Now, let's check in with the crew. TJ, what's on your mind? Something super rad happened this weekend. A trailer for the Godzilla vs. King Kong movie came out. Cool. Quick scientific survey around the room. Who wins in the fight, Godzilla or King Kong, I, Adam? I could not care less about this. Producer Jesse. Godzilla. Thank you. <laughs> you don't even ask me yet. Jess, <laughs> you know I don't the care. The Toronto Maple Leafs. I don't the know. Raptors. Austin Matthews. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, so Is that's that it? it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, great, if, if man. If this fuck that turned into a movie, it would be Godzilla vs. King Kong. <laughs> All right. Jackson, what about you? I need to give a shout out to the city of Toronto because obviously get a lot of flack right now, but the city of Toronto um, running the skating rinks all around the city so, so well. I went to uh, the Trinity Bellwoods um, skating rink on Friday and like there's a couple like teenagers working there just handling the line, answering questions, being so helpful and so kind. It was a really like nice experience and there's not a lot of nice experiences right now. <laughs> Please it, it was check out so Jax's good. video that she shot while she was there. It's on the Virgin Radio Instagram uh -huh. page. It is amazing and she's wearing uh, your, a your girlfriend's uh, figure skating outfit from when she was 13. God, yes, it's yes. Just <laughs> it's purple and it is really tight. <laughs> <laughs> Producer Jesse, I don't know why this feels like news, but it does. Courtney Kardashian is dating Travis yeah, Parker. It's an odd one, right? They're a I very strange couple, yeah. and I, I don't it. know what's really going on. I am I really it. excited <laughs> to be dating Travis, and I'm sure they have really fun monotone conversations. He doesn't. He's not very. No. He's not very excitable She's either. Like, no. I, I gotta play my drums, babe. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. The show he had on MTV with his ex-wife. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Meet yeah. the Barkers? Yeah, Meet the Barkers with oh, Shannon yeah. Oakland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember I that. I love yeah. this relationship. Nostalgia, right? Crazy. Yeah. Is that... Is that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm contributing today is the Godzilla vs. King Kong movie. And hey, remember this show from, from 2007? <laughs> um, guys, the most two, uh, 2021 headline ever, an artist will be playing at Super Bowl in the TikTok tailgate for healthcare workers. Oh my yeah. gosh. Is that not the most 2021 headline you've Hell ever heard? Yeah. The all TikTok the tailgate for healthcare workers. <laughs> Who is that artist? Oh, you'll find out. Travis Barker. Songs, not Travis Barker. <laughs> or his show from yeah. 20, 2007. <laughs> you guys remember seven, Life of Ryan? 710, we'll talk about it. is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde, TJ, and Jax. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. In the most 2020 headline, sorry, 2021 headline ever. Yes. Ah, that mm -hmm. 2020 joke's over. Uh, Miley Cyrus will perform at Super Bowl's TikTok tailgate for healthcare workers. That's right, it's a TikTok tailgate <laughs> for healthcare workers. Love All it. the buzzwords. Love it. You nailed it. Now, they are devoting 7,500 seats to vaccinated yes. healthcare workers in Tampa. 22,000 people will be going to the game because it's Florida. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they don't believe in the pandemic oh, down there. Oh, there's no pandemic yeah, in Florida. But, but, mm. but they are giving 7,500 yeah. seats to people that have been vaccinated yeah. and are help front, frontline workers. And that's amazing. Yeah. Miley's part is very <laughs> interesting. So this will be the pregame festivities. And the NFL revealed on Sunday that Miley would headline the TikTok tailgate. The event will be curated uh, to celebrate healthcare workers who were invited to attend the Super Bowl. According to the announcement, 7,500 people will be there. Most of these people they're hoping will be at the tailgate as well. Cool. And I'm sure as a frontline worker, you're as like, a part of your celebration, you're like, you know what? I worked really hard so I could see Miley Cyrus in person. I have saved people's lives for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. this I deserve I'm just glad I have TikTok so I can she, enjoy it. Now, to be I, fair, Miley is... Like, we make fun. Like Incredible it, performance. She's amazing yeah. live. Yeah. I'm yeah. absolutely amazing. And I'm kind of curious to see, because I remember a couple years ago, there was a big headline about the MTV VMAs. Yeah. And s the views on Snapchat had, for the first time, outstripped those on TV. Oh, wow. And I'm wondering if... TikTok will will we'll do Absolutely. that again this year because they need to have a yeah. TikTok strategy. They got to have something yeah. going yeah. on on TikTok. And I wonder if more people watch the Super Bowl on TikTok this year than watch it on actual TV because that's what's starting to happen. Yeah. One way you can guarantee that is she plays Party in the USA. 
Oh, yeah. She's at the biggest event in the world. She's got to be playing party in the I bet she will. She doesn't disappoint. Miley's a lot of things, but she never disappoints. Right. I thought she doesn't like that song. What's that? Didn't she say she didn't like that song? I think she was tired of performing it. She was just like, it's, you know, I have a lot of other songs in my catalog. But I... I think she's going to come through. I love Miley Cyrus. I'm really excited for this. You would be great. I love her so much. I hope she does Jolene again. I hope she does oh, Jolene oh, forever. Oh, best cover. Look it's up Virgin right Radio. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde, TJ, and Jax. A 99.9 Virgin Radio. Who needs bread when you can have pickles? Mm. I don't think I've ever said that. Mm-hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't think I have either, but Jax would. because Jax, 100% Jax could bathe in pickles. Yeah. So um, there's a place called in Burlington called Dill Pickle Wraps. Mm. And it's brought the dill pickle wrap trend with Rubens specifically yeah. to Ontario. So it's it, it's basically, and we're, we're shouting out some local restaurants because what the hey, yeah. right? We need to. Um, basically, they've replaced all of the bread on their menu with dill pickles. And I was just wondering, would you eat it? Because I think that's too much pickle for me. Yes! <laughs> it's too much pickle. Also, it just doesn't work. I don't know about you guys, but... When you're eating a sandwich, and I don't know if you've ever had the bread disappear on you too quick, and mm-hmm. then all you're left is with the fillings, I don't like that part. So you're basically just holding a really thin pickle the whole time that you're eating the sandwich, are you not? But if, if you're looking for a bread substitute, because a lot of people use like lettuce wraps or yeah. like iceberg lettuce and stuff, mm-hmm. that's not, like it's good, it holds it together, but like at least for the pickle, you get something out of it. You get some zest, a crunch. I do like a crunch. A kick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at their menu right now. And it's talking about the whole menu is supposed to be dedicated to pickles. So I'm assuming <laughs> that everything I'm about to tell you Love it. has pickles as instead of the bread. Okay. So they've got they started off with paninis. So there's grill like so you imagine Pickle ninis. Yeah, yeah, basically, right? So you got a grilled cheese panini, mm-hmm. a mushroom teriyaki, mm-hmm. uh, rock and roll, which is smashed avocado, herb, tomato, shredded lettuce, and pepper jack cheese. That sounds oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah, that sounds oh, really yeah. good. Uh, and then there are there are pickle wraps. Oh, yeah. Where you can get, like, say, a um, a West Coast Club cheddar grilled chicken, bacon, herb, tomato, avocado, chipotle with pickle. Mm. Okay, that sounds pretty good, too. There's a vegan menu, so there's a vegan mushroom teriyaki. There's a vegan grilled panini. And then they, <coughs> excuse me, also have things like a salad with pickles, tuna avocado. Oh. Cucumber, tuna, avocado, oh. onion, balsamic, a romaine. pickle salad. I'm assuming that's what's yeah. happening. Oh, okay. And then they've got their full pickle sandwich lineup. Yeah. 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 Some people have such vision. You know, yeah. like to, to put all those things on a pickle. Yeah. Good for you. We're also just running out of ideas. Yeah. Like, you know what hey, I mean? Yeah. You know what? I just yeah. want to give them a shout out for opening a restaurant in the middle yeah. of this pandemic. Yeah. Good for them. It's and a takeout spot. They're doing well. And you know, Burlington has a lot of good food places. So maybe I I'll know. To, yeah, okay. Yeah, so dip out the, there the thing this. is, is that like, okay, so, so TJ, you used to go out there a lot, you know, when we could leave. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, go visit there. your brother. Yeah. Jax, you were out there a lot too. Yeah. And there's like all these spots and people that people are talking about in Burlington that are like this up and coming. It's this, this foodie paradise. It's fantastic. And they also have like a lot of classic places. What's mm-hmm. that uh, hot dog place called, Jax? Oh, Easterbrook's, man. Easterbrook's, Easter Easterbrook's is the best hot dog Jax place Jax keeps trying to get me to go to Burlington just to try this place. Yeah, Why yeah. is it so good? What's so good about it? They're like infamous. I think they've been open since the 70s. I don't know their story yeah. fully, um, but it's like an old diner. It's incredible. They have like super long hot dogs. And I think like Jim Carrey used to go there all the time. Like they have a lot of famous people. <laughs> People that come in there. <laughs> and Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey right here. Uh, it's so good. Easter Brooks is the best. It's so good. And so many different kinds of hot dogs, boys. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde, TJ, and Jax. A 99.9 Virgin Radio. So one of the things you have to do, I think at least once every three years, if you live in the GTHA, some sort of, you know, in, in Southern Ontario, is you have to go to Niagara. Mm-hmm. And you have to do the strip. You have to. The hill. Yeah, you got to do that hill. And you yeah. got to do, by the way, that, um, I think that uh, uh, arcade is open 24-7. I've gone to that arcade. I've left the city at, at 12 o'clock at night, yeah. gone there, played the arcade games at 2 a.m. and then come home. Games back in the day. <laughs> not, not, not while I was doing mornings, obviously, yeah. but just for fun. It was, it was a date night. I was on. Yeah, yeah it's where I was yeah. last night. Yeah. So, Unfortunately, because of what's happened with the pandemic, it looks like we're losing one of the yeah. major parts of that strip in Niagara, Ripley's Guinness Book of World Records Museum. Yeah. And so Bummer. what's crazy about this, it's been open for 42 years. Its last day of operations was September 7th this fall. They announced they are selling everything off. So all the memorabilia from the museum, 
uh, sculpted characters, displays, exhibits, smaller items such as world record plaques scheduled for Friday, February 12th. So you can actually buy some of these things, um, including the world's smallest bicycle. Incredible. Ooh. The world's largest pinball game. Perfect. And that starts today, and there's actually an auction that you can pick that up on. Yeah, and those, they're going to go for probably some big some prices, big money, right? For sure. I want to get something spooky and put it in TJ's house. How about uh, <laughs> they have a coin-operated animated electric chair? Oh, that's only sixteen hundred bucks. That's not cool. What? Oh, God. <laughs> Why? Do you... It's not a real electric chair. What else you got? What else you got? Uh, the world champion slimmer weight loss museum display. That's only four hundred bucks. Okay. Ooh, the giant wooden chair. Give me the giant wooden oh, chair. The big oh, right one at that, the beginning. Yeah. Or, yeah. Isn't it yeah. right at the front? Yeah. Makes you feel little. It's uh, <laughs> it it's gonna it. There's a lot of stuff there that I'd be like, there's no way I would want yeah. that in my house. <laughs> a lot <laughs> of these play, things have bids though. Yeah. Like the, oh, I'm sure. Okay, so the giant wooden chair, for example, ten bids. Mm -hmm. 13 bids on the replica phone booth to just basically show how tall something is. <laughs> That's the it? electric chair. No, yeah, no, it's <laughs> those are the only two bids. No, it's the electric chair. Uh, the electric chair has 11 bids. Oh. So, uh, yeah, okay, so so you buy it, all right? Because it's kind of fun to buy it online. Yeah. What do you do with it? You show your friends. Is it a conversation piece Absolutely in your basement? It is. Yeah. Really? When if it's you, legal to have people no. over again. If you are you at spending your money on an electric chair from Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum, <laughs> then you have too much money. <laughs> that's like that's, that's I agree. I think at that I, point I it's think like it's too much, yeah. Hey, what's up? This is mornings with what's trending. And this is what's trending right now. In what might be the wildest story of the year so far, Seventeen magazine published a story with someone impersonating Lily <laughs> Reinhardt. So on Friday, they issued an apology to the 24-year-old actress after they published an inter interview by someone pretending to be her. They posted a statement on Twitter saying, Today, we briefly published a story with information we were led to believe was from Lily Reinhardt. However, it was brought to our attention that the person who contacted us was, in fact, an impersonator and had no Stop. connection to the Riverdale star. Crazy. Uh, they went on to apologize and all that fun stuff. She even talked about it on her Instagram being like, uh, why would someone do this? Yeah. It's very funny, also kind of scary. And it's yeah. funny, is that weird? Also weird is that, okay, so you get through, you're the Lily Reinhardt impersonator, and you somehow yeah. manage to convince these, this magazine that it's you. On top of that, they didn't say anything controversial. It was yeah, just boring. Yeah, what's the point? Yeah, like, just like, yeah, that's what I'm up to. Like, even she said on her Instagram, yeah. she's like, nothing bad was said, it was just not me. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. People are finding different hobbies in the pandemic. Uh, yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Maybe that's the thing. Now you got to question every interview yeah. you've seen. That's right. Hey, speaking of weird interviews, Joe Exotic has reached out to Joe Biden after a failed pardon attempt with Donald Trump. Joe just can't stop and he won't stop. Uh, TMZ obtained the emails that Joe sent out from his, uh, out to his team from prison in which, it's, in which he expresses hopefulness that the new administration will come through with a pardon after failing to make Trump's last-minute list. He says he's more confident in Biden regarding criminal justice, and, uh, criminal justice and prison reform and claims he watched a TV special on VP Kamala Harris, leading him to believe she can help clean up the corruption in the Department of Justice and other agencies. Mm. They have so many other messes to clean yeah. up. You know <laughs> a lot I mean? of stuff like, on yeah, fire right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't yeah, think Joe Exotic's yeah. part of it. I think in the first 100 days, what he should do is help Joe Exotic. That's just my belief. Yeah. Dan Levy's going to be hosting SNL Woo! on February 6th, Love which that. is super awesome. He's going to be joined by musical guest Phoebe Bridgers. I uh, shared the news on his Twitter by posting a photo of the SNL schedule with the caption, OMFG. That's huge. That's Damn massive. Lovely. Yeah. Cool news. That's what's trending on TJ. So cool. I remember watching him and Jesse Crookshank in the yeah, Hills After Show. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was, uh, that was a fun time. Who knew back then that uh, the two of them would go on to so much? You, you knew? Did? Yeah, yeah you I knew. called it. Yeah, I did. I used to, I started an internet blog and I was like, uh, uh, one day this Dan's going to be hosting SNL and Jesse's going to be doing her thing as well. And then no one believed me, but look at me now, Dad. A prophet. Yep. By the way, I called none of that. All that was I didn't up. think so. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, keyword to live rent-free in 2021, two songs from now. I'm not your friend. Adam Wilde, TJ and Jax. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. Okay, things you caught a first date doing that they definitely should not have been doing. The thing that makes you pull like an emergency break. You ever had to pull one yeah. of those on a first oh, date? Yeah. Where it's like, uh, oh, my friend's calling <laughs> me and I must leave. If it goes immediately wrong and you must get out of there, there's somebody mm -hmm. who went viral for scrolling on his phone. I'll tell you that story in just a second, but first, we got a couple text messages oh, here already. Yeah. Tell us the stories, TJ. What are people saying? From the 416, I had a guy stare at my hands and my clothes and tell me how much nicer they were than his ex. Whoa. I ran to the 
the bathroom so oh, fast to try and get a ride home and yeah. leave. Don't like that. No, don't nope. like this one either from the 416. Went on a date, and on the drive to our destination, they hit a raccoon. This person <laughs> showed zero emotion. Instantly thought serial killer and aborted the mission. Yeah, that's real really quick. weird. <laughs> Holy yeah, you just tuck and roll out of the car. <laughs> Those are two very intense stories. Yeah. I was not expecting. Same but guy. Mm, yeah. So, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> He's just out there dating. Now, um, there is a um, there's a video posted online of a man, and he has gone viral mm -hmm. because he was on a first date, and he was scrolling through his phone. The thing is, this man has glasses. So if you have glasses, they have a mirroring effect. I'm yeah. not sure if you realize this. Mm -hmm. And you can sort of see what somebody's doing on their phone. And the dating app Bumble, in case you've ever been on it, is yellow. Pretty easy to figure yep. out which yeah. app you're on if you're on a y bright yellow mm -hmm. dating app. And this guy <laughs> was scrolling Bumble. The caption for the video is, I wish I was kidding. It's got over a million views now. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Now the post is marked private, but the Daily Mail caught a few reactions. Yeah. People were, yeah. <laughs> People were obviously not thrilled. Years ago, I went out for drinks with a, with a girl, and she had, like, Tinder notifications popping up on her phone. She had it on the bar, which is, like, fine, whatever. Like, yeah. we're only on a first date. Like, do what you need to do. Um, and you can be seeing who you want to see. Um, but she kept checking them. Like, she kept on opening oh, them and pretending she was going no. to, like, check, like, text or something. But I was like, you're obviously, like, that's the only thing that's popping up on your phone. And, how yeah. long had you been there? Probably like forty five minutes. Okay. Like, but wow, even so, like, can you not put your phone down for an hour? I know. Oh, no. oh, I that's know. what I'm saying. I never like, bring up my phone on like yeah, a first date. Yeah, go yeah, home. Go yeah. back on the couch. Yeah. And, and then and and I was like, I'll, yeah, I'll check my my notifications later, girl. Come I on. love this one from Branford. Hey, I, hey guys, I had a guy try to feed me frozen yogurt in the form of an airplane. Ew. So like, <laughs> that's kind of hot. I bring <laughs> TJ Dalton. Oh, coming for a TJ? landing. <laughs> <laughs> I ran to the bathroom so fast. And this is the stories we want to hear. They were they were really weird on the first date, and you were like, I gotta get out of here. Mm -hmm. I'm terrified because I don't know how many of these stories are gonna be about me. Uh, it could be. Yeah. It could be. You got another one. <laughs> <laughs> what? I've I've been a weird guy on a few dates, is what I'm saying. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. Have you a story for us? No, yeah. but I'm sure there's some people out there with some stories about yeah. me for sure. I hope so. Text how them in, triple nine double nine. How big? <laughs> <laughs> so hit us up, triple nine double nine or four one six eight seven two ninety nine ninety nine with ninety nine nine Virgin Radio. TJ and Jax on ninety nine nine Virgin Radio. You caught your first date doing something they definitely should not have been doing. What happened? Hit us up, triple nine double nine or four one six eight seven two ninety nine ninety nine from the two eight nine. This guy showed up uh, pretty high, forgot what he was saying, and oh. kept asking me the same question without making any eye oh, contact. Boy, nice. Yeah. Uh, another one from the nine zero five. He kept asking me if my best friend was single. Uh, from the 705 on a first date <laughs> I had a guy reach across the table grab my shoulder and told me to sit up straight I what? would oh. hit him <laughs> excuse do me that, dude what's wrong with you like next level man oh, it's, oh, like, oh, it's crazy oh, yeah, that's good on that. Uh, from the 905 we're kissing goodnight and he licked the side of my face like a dog it was a little strange <laughs> <laughs> So weird people are out I think you, you you have to, before you lick someone's face like a dog, you yeah. have to know them a little better yeah. than the first date. Yeah. Do you not? <laughs> also, what are you doing? It's a, it's a bold choice. No, you know what? I is. want someone to lick my face at the yeah. end of the night. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. Uh, last one here from the 416. I went on a first date. We went to Tim Hortons. He got an ice cap and proceeded to take out his retainer. I had to leave quickly. Good for him for wanting to fix his teeth in his late 20s, but... Should have left the retainer at home. No, you gotta do what you gotta do. What? Well, yeah. I don't know. Jax. No. Okay. He. Okay. I think that the texture is being a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, me too. Uh, but you take the retainer out in the bathroom. That's oh, yeah. what you. That's the mannerly thing to do. Yeah. But like, you don't not date someone because yeah. they're. They have a retainer. I, I no, feel, I think it was yeah. the etiquette of taking the retainer out at the table, at the which date. is gross, which is fair. Putting yeah. it but in then, the case with yeah, some yeah, that's weird. String. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I mean, like, both oh, sides. <laughs> I feel like there might have been more than just the retainer yeah, at stake there. Yeah, I feel like that was like the you know, the cherry on top. Maybe not the catalyst. Last one, Teach. From the 905. Kept flexing his arms and telling me to feel. Oh, oh man. Speak again. Bet, bet, that. bet he had a barbed wire tattoo. <laughs> People don't like that? <laughs> nope. No. Hello, we are AJR. This is our new single mornings. With What's Trending. And this is What's Trending right now. The Guinness World Records Museum in Niagara is closing and auctioning off 
everything. Uh, they announced this in the news release that after 42 years, the popular attraction has permanently closed its doors. Uh, they're selling everything off, which includes mem memorabilia, like artifacts, sculpted characters, displays, exhibits, even smaller items, such as record wall plaques. Uh, this is going on until the uh, 12th of February at 5 p.m. this nice. auction. But there's like, there's a bunch of stuff out for auction that you can grab, like the world's smallest bicycle. There was the chair that they used for the world's tallest man. And a lot of these things have a lot of bids. There's like 10 to 12 bids per item. It's getting up there in price. What are you going to do with the bit, the world's tallest chair? For, or My apartment's like 300 square feet. Yeah, yeah. like where you, <laughs> that in where you putting that? My landlord would be mad. <laughs> You'd have to have a backyard to yeah, that for sure. Yeah, I think right? so. Yeah. so it'd be a good conversation piece. Hey, shout out to Jojo Siwa, who comes out and has Woo! never been this happy, she says. Uh, in a post on Twitter, the teenager shared a photo of herself wearing a t-shirt with the words Best Gay Cousin Ever printed on it. She later told fans that she was not ready to put a label on her sexuality, but that coming out felt awesome, which I is really cool. Love JoJo. And love seeing That's representation so for people yeah. who are very young. How do you turn your failed resolution into a habit that you'll actually do? They say that January 17th is the day that most New Year's resolutions kind of fall off the table, which of course was like last week, week before. So they say there's three things you should do. You gotta pick something that you want to do so for example if you hate going to the gym you're not going to stick with it more than likely so don't pick something that you hate but pick some things that you can like get around so for example uh you'll be much more likely to do something like go for a walk or get outside every day so you make that your resolution it's all about moving the goalposts a little bit uh number two choose something that you can do like if your goal was to eat home cooked meals during the week but you realize it's just not possible mm -hmm. with your work schedule try setting the rule for cooking on weekends and number three whatever you choose it should still be effective for example if you're trying to reduce stress and you start meditating, but you know that's that the meditation just makes you more aware of how stressed you are, which absolutely can happen. It's not effective and definitely not something you're going to keep up long term. So it's basically just about being real easy on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You and you know be. what? Why not? Yeah. Like, what, what, yeah. What's being hard on yourself at this point going to do? I think we've earned that this year. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. That's what's trending on TJ. Thank you, TJ. And just over an hour from now, it's going to be another opportunity for you to live rent-free in 2021 with 99.9 Virgin Radio. We'll have a keyword for you at 10. Billboard, baby, do a leap and make them dance when it come on. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde, TJ, and Jax. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. There's only one way to properly preface this story about Jax and the awkward blind date book that she received. Jax's father passed away a couple of years ago. <laughs> That's a very important detail to the story. Integral part of this story, yeah. So, Jax, explain to us this blind date book that you received. How does this work? Okay, so Glad Day Bookshop in the Village, which is actually, uh, heads up, the world's oldest LGBTQ plus bookstore. So oh. it's incredible. So it's a wonderful resource for the community. Uh, it also holds dance parties. Uh, they sell books. They they sell food. And now they're available on Uber Eats. Great so idea. Can, yeah, and they have a bunch of folks, um, you know, uh, cooking up food and then you can order through Glad Day. So uh, I wanted to order some food and I had also heard that they do this thing called Blind Date with a book where you can just be paired up with a random book. They'll send you a book. It's like eight bucks. Yeah. You have no idea what you're going to get. Okay. And so no, hold on. Now, do you read a lot? Are I you... do. I, I do like to read. And I read, I mostly read like autobiographies and things like mm -hmm. that. What was the last book you read? Uh, David Bowie. Oh, good. David Bowie okay. That'd be an interesting That's one. Like my That's seventh cool. one. Yeah, I love him. But, um, so I wasn't sure what I was going to get, but either way, I was excited because, you know, support local and like Glad Day has some <laughs> wonderful, wonderful literature, right? They have some, they have some wonderful books. So, uh, I, um, I ordered dinner and it came and, um, the book was all wrapped up and it was so cute, right? Everything's so cute. Oh, so they hide it so you can't. Like they hide it so you can even see it. Yeah, nice. so it was like wrapped up in like purple cellophane kind of wrapping paper, and um, my uh, my girlfriend <laughs> Michelle was over and she was sitting across from me. And as I was unwrapping, I was so excited, guys. She could see the spine of the book and what it said on it before I could, and I saw her face just like go white. Uh oh. The book that Glad Day Bookshop gave me is called "Long Live the Tribe of Fatherless Girls." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. They sent me a book about <laughs> girls with no fathers and my dad died two years ago. So, you know, like the wind was out of my sails quite quickly. Mm. Ah, Did like, you read it? No. <laughs> God, no. Do you, uh, you don't, like, you're saying you don't need a reminder. You know what? 
Support local, but like <laughs> not, not but that. Like, reason. That's, that's too close. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> blind dates at the best of the time oh. usually have bad consequences. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you should have seen this coming. Yeah, I think the moral in this story is don't read why, books. Why would yeah. they give anyone that book? <laughs> <laughs> like, why? Send that book out. <laughs> well, let us know how it is. <laughs> yeah. It's Virgin Radio. <laughs> On 99.9 Virgin Radio. So the question is, who gives better advice? Someone in a long-term relationship or someone who's been through a lot of breakups? It's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. No. Now, what are the text messages saying so far, Triple Nine Double Nine? Pretty yeah. split. I got two here from the 289. Person in a long-term relationship gives better advice because they've gone through the ups and downs and figured out what it takes to make a relationship work. Those who move around too much aren't willing to make it through bumps in relationships and may give up too easily. Another one from the 647 says, I have been with my husband since I was 20. We've been together about 22 years, married almost 19. I have a lot of single friends, and there is no way yeah. I could help them with their relationship because I have no idea what's going on, LOL. The only thing I can ever say is compromising is key. And that's from Natasha. Okay. And that's like, I think that that's true. Like, my best friend Emma has been with the same guy for like 13 years. They've been married for a couple of years now. I would never go to her for breakup advice. And they're happy advice. and they're jerks. Yeah. They're happy. They're, they've been through the ups and downs, but like, that doesn't help me with my ups and downs. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, I think that folks who have been in long term relationships don't necessarily get what breakups are like. You know what I mean? So. The stats, and this is just what people think okay. so far in a survey, and we'll get to ours in a second. 32% of people went with long-term relationship person. They're saying that they're going to trust the long-term relationship yeah. person. 17% would like the breakup veteran, somebody yeah. who's been through yeah. it. You know, you've been through their dude. You've cheated on me, yeah. dead, but yeah. I still survived. Yeah. <laughs> my, my heart's like an old leather purse right now, but I made it. They have, right more, experience. Now, they have more experience. They have yeah. more depth. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like 100%. someone that works with their hands but doesn't moisturize. Yeah. 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 <laughs> these things are, <laughs> these things are weathered. <laughs> so the question we have for you is... Who do you trust? Virgin Mornings. Here's another scientific survey. Scientific survey. If you don't know the rules, they're like this. We take the first five calls and texts. 416-872-9999, triple nine, double nine to text. We want to know who you would trust. I guess I'm in like veteran status level. You got to ask yourself, would you trust me with breakup advice? No. Divorced father? <laughs> <laughs> I would though, because you've seen well, some and stuff. It's, again, it, this isn't necessarily breakup advice; yeah. it's relationship yeah. Yeah. advice. So it's the whole picture, the whole mm -hmm. spectrum. And See, I, I got a friend named Steve who who's been with the same woman since they were eighteen. They met at a party. And she said that she wouldn't make out with them unless they were dating. And now they're hey. they're married. And they have a child. And yeah. everything. He's <laughs> yeah, my best. He's yeah. my, still well, haven't made out. You know, no, they definitely have made out. I think. Um, <laughs> never seen it. <laughs> now they are an incredible couple together. Yeah. He does give great relationship advice, but not great breakup advice. Yeah. yeah. So because he doesn't know, right? But when he's in a relationship, yeah. like when you're talking about in relationship things, his problem solving is pretty great. Yeah. And I think that's why it's lasted. So I, I, I don't I don't even really know what my answer to this is, which is weird because I'm yeah. usually like, this is how I feel. I know my answer. It's very definitive. I only take advice from people in relationships. And it's not so much that I trust their opinion more. It's just that I trust single people less. Because right. single people, it, frankly, were, we were single for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> and people in relationships have somewhat figured it out. And usually so you're going, you're going long term? Hell yeah. Okay, no. so Jax, you're short term? Always, yeah. TJ, you're long term. So you're, are you team TJ or are you team Jax? 416-872-9999. Triple nine, double nine to text. I'm excited to hear some of the reasoning. I need to be convinced. Because, uh, frankly, I'm a little lost. <laughs> it's Billie Eilish. 99.9 Virgin Radio. I'm not your friend. Virgin Mornings. Here's another scientific survey. Scientific survey. So who do you trust to give you the best relationship advice? Somebody in a long-term relationship or someone who's been through lots of breakups? Now, in a recent survey of the UK... 32% of people said the long-term relationship person. 17% want the breakup veteran. 51% are not sure. Which actually is most of the text messages we're yeah, getting right now. Yeah. So we're taking the first five definitive ones we got on one side or the other to triple nine, double nine. TJ, hit us up. From the 905, people who've been through more breakups have experienced more things. So it only makes sense that they give better advice. Yeah. Now, I've, I've known a lot of people who've experienced a lot of things, yeah. and I would not trust their advice at all. I'm not sure. I, like, I, I sort of agree with where, yeah. where you're going with that, but just because you might be the cause of all the things, right? That's so, right. Yeah, yeah. You might yeah, be the common denominator. If you're self-aware, you can warn against doing what you've done. Oh, but if you're self-aware, why are you asking for advice? 
No, I meant the other. No person. giving, giving advice. advice. Oh yeah. yeah. No. yeah. Ignore what I said then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another one from the four one six. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather take sports advice from a professional athlete or someone who plays beer league on Wednesday nights? There's your answer. Relationship vets know the goods. No. Like as in like long term relationship yeah. vets? Oh, yeah. okay. No, you know what? Okay. The the, I, the thing I will say is too, long term relationships are interesting because it is so much based on who you met when. Yeah. You met somebody yeah. at the right place at the right time, and you guys grow together, and that's amazing. Yeah. Sometimes you just haven't met that yeah, person yet. Yeah, yeah. And so the people that have been through the breakups, it might just be that they were incompatible with the breakup yeah. people, mm-hmm. right? You know? Somebody actually brought up that point, sort of. Uh, I always go to relationship, long term relationship people. They've made it work for so long, they've got to have something figured out. Having said that, never go to your parents. They <laughs> might not have it figured out so well. True. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from the 905, I'm the single friend in my group, and all my married buddies come to me for advice rather than go to each other. Single people just see the world differently, I it's guess. Wink face. And anytime I ask my married friends, like, you know, what's your secret to success? They're like, I don't know, he's kind of figure it out. I'm like, that's so vague and not yeah. helpful at all. Or like, you just stick with it. I'm like, no, no, like, okay, what does that actually mean, though? Or, or they say, like, oh, get a king size duvet. And you're like, what? I've never, um, you know, in the long term relationships I've been in, and there've been a couple. I've never felt like you fully have it figured out. No. I think that's probably why they say that. Yeah. Is it like you're? It's always like, well, we're just we've solved the last problem until the next problem. Like you've you been know? together like, for thirteen years. You're like I know, <laughs> I'm still holding on. <laughs> last one from the five point nine. I would trust the breakup veteran. The long term relationship person wouldn't know how dating culture is now. It's True. very very different. Oh, good point. So, True. does a breakup veteran win? Yes. Yes. Score of three to two. Now it's listen, tight. as it's the okay, veteran for myself. relationship person on the show, I Seven can tell months, you guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I have it all figured out. So <laughs> just come to me for your advice and I'll give it to you. It's 99.9 Virgin Radio. Thank you for that, TJ. Put me on a pedestal and Story. tell me I'm the... With someone impersonating Lily Reinhardt. So on January 22nd, past Friday, Seventeen Magazine issued an apology to the 24-year-old actress after they published an interview with someone pretending to be her. They said, We briefly published a story with information we were led to believe was from Lily Reinhardt. However, it was brought to our attention that the person who was who contacted us was, in fact, an impersonator and had no connection to the Riverdale star. We apologized, all that fun stuff. Apparently, somebody impersonated both Lily Reinhardt and her agent or her publicist or whatever. You know, people in the pandemic keeping busy somehow. Well, that's the thing is they didn't even like say anything that no. controversial. Yeah, like if, if it was if it was you, you would have said something that oh, yeah. that would have been like a hint or yeah. that would have made headlines. This interview would have just passed into the night and nobody would have known the yeah. difference. Yeah. Just a weird story. I love it so much. Uh, the Guinness World Records Museum in Niagara is closing and beyond that, they're auctioning everything off. It's been open for 42 years, but it closed its doors in September, and now they have an auction going on until February the 12th, and you can buy a whole bunch of stuff. You can bid on artifacts like the world's smallest bicycle and the world's largest pinball game. Uh, there's also uh, sculpted characters, displays, exhibits, and even smaller items like record wall plaques. Hmm. So get on Anything that. on there you want? I really wanted the electric chair for some reason. Uh, I wouldn't mind having the really big chair. Apparently, the electric chair was so uh, accurate that they had to take it off. Like it's it's been uh, in storage for a while because people yeah. were, I guess, uncomfortable with it. Yeah. It's terrifying. Yeah, why would you want that? Because it couldn't even go in the museum. There's like a <laughs> there's like a danger factor to it that I am here for. Okay. He's a risky guy. Well, yeah. Listen, he can't be dangerous, boy. but his yeah. chair is. Yeah. <laughs> hey, shout out to Dan Levy. He's gonna be hosting Woo! Saturday Night Live this on February six. Uh, musical guest that night is gonna be Phoebe Bridgers. He shared the news on his Twitter by posting a photo Incredible. of the SNL schedule which is the caption OMFG yeah. how much do we love Dan so, so much, much. and just awesome. like continued success just keep blowing up love that's it. what's trending I'm TJ thank you TJ and in a couple of songs at 10 o'clock it's keyword time for you to live rent free in 2021 just imagine that with Virgin Radio this is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde TJ and Jax on 99.9 Virgin Radio before March 15th of 2020 did you know what a Zoom call was? No. I had heard whisperings, rumblings. Oh. I'd never heard of a Zoom. No. I knew like Skype existed yeah. and I knew FaceTime existed. Never heard of Zoom. Yeah. It was like a second, third tier yeah. communication tool, but not a lot of people used. And then it blew up. If you owned a Zoom stock oh, dear. Yeah. before Don't. March 15th, you're now basically a millionaire. Oh, like, yeah. You're not working. crazy how much money yeah. they, ma- they made over the pandemic. You're Good listening to us on the gold radio right yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, um... There is a question out there and a bunch of a bunch of surveys out there about who you're looking at on Zoom calls. Hmm. So is it other people or yourself? <laughs> and then there's a follow-up question. Do you wear pants? 
Important question. Now, first one. 59% of people say they spend most of the time looking at their coworkers on Zoom calls, meaning they don't look at themselves. Jax, TJ, let me hear yours. I mostly look I mostly look at who's speaking, but sometimes I dart around. And TJ, you you're have... always looking, your eyes are always looking for trouble. You're looking around too. <laughs> do you do the gallery view? Yeah. Or do yeah, you do the yeah. person no. who's speaking view? So I do the person who's speaking view because I found my eyes were darting around yeah. too much yes. and I was trying to find people. So now I just do the person who's speaking view. Yeah, I switched over too. But I have found that since I made the switch, that I'm constantly looking at myself. And if you guys look at me on Zoom calls, you'll notice I'm always touching my hair. <laughs> yeah, TJ's, TJ's upset because hey. he thinks his hair is long. And yeah. <laughs> you got to look at our videos. You can watch our video podcast, yeah. 99.9 Merch Radio. That's it. We think he looks handsome he's with like, this I long decided, hair. He's like, I decided to grow my hair. It's like, you don't have another choice but <laughs> to grow your hair. Yeah. So I switched to the one-on-one -on -one yeah. view as Same well. Here. Yeah. And the reason I did that is because at one point, our uh, uh, assistant producer, Michaela, was outside this summer on a Zoom call with all all of us and her dad started cleaning the windows of her house and I couldn't pay yeah. attention to the yeah, meeting yeah, and I had yeah, like that was the rest yeah. of the meeting for me because I'm yeah. like a goldfish now 25% of people admit you're mostly looking admit to mostly looking at themselves I'm sure that number's higher mm -hmm. women are more likely to admit to looking at themselves because women I think are more honest here 32% of women say they do it 19% of men and the survey also asked how many people and how often you wear pants or any other bottoms when you're working from home. 76% say they have pants on or don't. They have pants on. Yeah, say. have pants, have pants on. Yeah, 76% uh, said they do. Wouldn't they be 20, awesome if it was the other way around? 21% said sometimes they don't, and 1% said they never do. Okay, awesome. so like, because at, at the beginning it was like, yeah, nobody knows that I don't have pants on. It's like, just put on some pants. Right. Like, so, you know what I mean? Wear this for a long time. I wear pants in every Zoom call, but I will push it a little bit. I'll be wearing sweatpants. Like, I, I do yeah, hits for yeah. CTV every once in a while. Oh, do you do them in your sweatpants? No, I've done a hit for CTV in my pajamas. So, like, TV? I'm wearing oh. a blazer and dress yeah. shirt on top and the bottom red plaid. Smart. Yeah. Interesting. I um I did the um so we I, there's a Jason Derulo interview you can catch on our Instagram. So page. good, yeah. Um so one of this isn't pleasant, but my my daughter had thrown up on me yeah. not five minutes before that. <laughs> and good. so I had to take my pants off. So I actually did that interview in my underwear. Really? Awesome. And I was wearing boxer briefs. Yeah, no, like I mean it wasn't like oh, anything weird so going much on, but sex appeal but on that call, eh? All you can yeah. see is it's chest up. It's nips yeah. up on that one. So yeah. you can't see anything else oh. from my home studio. So it it Yeah, but I'm fully here to admit that that's my professional duty. Incredible. I didn't have time to go grab pants and put it. Yeah, anyway. Bringing out the old tree trunks. <laughs> <laughs> they are they are some thick legs. Oh, hair question. pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's 99.9 Virgin Radio. 99.9 Virgin Radio. Are you ready for the most 2021 headline ever? It's not you 2020. You almost said 2020, but we're 2021. all there. 2021. Most 2021 headline ever is Miley Cyrus will perform at Super Bowl for the TikTok tailgate Love for healthcare it. workers. T Every word in there is a buzzword. TikTok tailgate. For healthcare workers. Tailgate TikTok. Now, what, one thing I'll give the Super Bowl credit for, um, I find it still a little bit unnerving that 22,000 people will be at the Super Bowl in mm -hmm. Tampa, but remember it's Florida yeah. and they're handling things differently. Not and much we can do about that. None of our them. business. Yeah. None of our beeswax. However, 7,500 of them will be healthcare workers who've already been inoculated. Yeah. Cool. Which is great. Okay. You know, they've got the double do dose of the vaccine. That's incredible news. Miley Cyrus will take part in the pregame festivities. And the NFL revealed that. Miley will take the stage and perform before. So it'll be 2.30 in the afternoon our time. Oh, a little matinee. Okay. And then usually the... Um I Pilot would say you, usually the the Super Bowl starts at like eight o'clock at night. Yeah, it's like there's like a whole big you know pomp and circumstance. Yeah, but you gotta watch the twelve hours of pregame. A hundred percent, it is a whole day. And you know what? In my house, it's it's like a religion. My mom is from America, huge, huge, huge football fan. So part of it. But um, what I wanted to th ask you, and this is kind of a weird thing to ask, mm -hmm. but I remember a few years ago the VMAs, the Video Music Awards for MTV, made history because there the actual broadcast was not watched as much as it was on Snapchat. So people watch the highlights on Snapchat yeah. more than they watch wow. the actual broadcast. And I'm wondering with this TikTok, uh, TikTok tailgate, if it's going to outstrip what the Super Bowl does. 100%. And even you before, think so? Because yeah. the Super Bowl gets I know, I know, million. I know, but having like the access to it afterwards, especially, like, that'll pump up the view count. And we saw that before Snapchat. And remember Twitter? All the views on Twitter used to be big, not necessarily than the Super Bowl, but bigger sure. than music or, or political events. 
It's where you get the views. It's where people are watching. It all TikTok's really where everyone's watching. It all really matters, like Jack said, retroactively. Yeah. But if if Miley does something that gets people talking, it's which buzzing. she always does. Oh yeah, it's right. the right person on the right yeah. platform. So something's gonna happen. Listen, this is a big year. This is a big year for Tom Brady and the Stop Dolphins. No, no Buccaneers. And Other Florida listen, teams. Listen, go Pats. <laughs> Okay. Don't. Go, go Sharks. Who do you going to win? You know what? Orlando. I got, I'm running Close out. to Tampa. It's yeah. about an hour and a half away. So you're saying Buccaneers? Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs>